This is section 18 of the complete works of George Saville, first Marquis of Halifax. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Some cautions offered to the consideration of those who are to choose members to serve for the ensuing Parliament. Read by John Greenman. I will make no other introduction than that it is hoped the counties and boroughs will remember in general that besides other consequences they will have the credit of a good choice or the scandal that belongeth to an ill one the creators will be thought like their creatures and therefore an ill choice will either be a disparagement of their understanding or their morals there cannot be a fuller approbation of a thing than the choosing of it so that the fault of the members chosen if known beforehand will be judged to be of the growth of that county or borough after such a solemn approbation of them in short those who send up their representatives to westminster should take care they may be such as will do them right and their country honor now to the particulars one a very extraordinary earnestness to be chosen is no very good symptom a desire to serve the nation in parliament is an englishman's ambition always to be encouraged and never to be disapproved a man may not only be willing to stand but he may declare that willingness to his friends that they may assist him and by all the means becoming a modest and prudent man he may endeavor to succeed and prevent the being disappointed in it but there is a wide difference between this and the raising a kind of petty war in the county or corporation entering the lists rather for a combat than an election throwing fireballs to put men into heat and omitting to spread no reports whether true or false which may give an advantage by laying a blemish upon a competitor these methods will ever be suspicious it will never be thought a natural thing for men to take such extravagant pains for the mere sake of doing good to others to be content to suffer something for a good end is that which many would do without any great repugnance but where a man can honestly propose nothing to himself except troubles charge and loss by absence from his own affairs to be so violent in the pursuit of so ill a bargain is not at all suited to the languishing virtue of mankind so corrupted such a self-denying zeal in such a self-seeking age is so little to be imagined that it may without injury be suspected therefore when these blustering pretenders come upon the stage their natural temper and other circumstances ought to be very well considered before men trust them with the disposal of their money or their liberty and i am apt to believe there could hardly be found one single man whose other qualifications would overbalance the objections that lie against such importunate suitors two recommending letters ought to have no effect upon elections in this i must distinguish for though in strictness perhaps there should be no exception yet in compliance with long practice and out of an indulgence that is necessary in a time when mankind is too much loosened from severe rules to be kept close up to them letters sent only from equal men doing good men right by giving evidence in their behalf offering them as fitly qualified when they really are so and freeing them from unjust aspersions may still be allowed the letters i mean are from men of power where it may be beneficial to comply and inconvenient to oppose choice must not only be free from force but from influence which is a degree of force there must be no difficulty no apprehension that a refusal will be ill taken or resented the freeholders must be freemen too they are to have no shackles upon their votes in an election and the men who stand should carry their own letters of recommendation about them 
which are their good character and behavior in the world without borrowing evidence especially when it cometh from suspected hands those who make use of these epistles ought to have no more advantage from them than the muscovites have from the letters put into their hands when they are buried to recommend them to st nicholas the first should as little get admittance for men into the parliament as these letters can introduce the bearers into heaven the scandal of such letters liest first in the arrogant imposing of those that write them and next in the wretched meanness of those that need them men must be fallen very low in their credit who upon such an occasion have a recourse to power to support it their enemies could not give stronger evidence of their not being fit for that which they pretend to and if the electors judge otherwise they will be pretty sure in a little time to see their mistake and to repent it three non-attendance in former parliaments ought to be a bar against the choice of men who have been guilty of it it is one of the worst kinds of non-residence and the least to be excused it is very hard that men should despise a duty which perhaps is the only ground of the respect that is paid to them it is such a piece of sauciness for any one to press for the honor of serving in parliament and then to be careless in attending it that in a house where there were so many officers the penalty had not been improper to have cashiered them for not appearing at the general muster if men forbear to come out of laziness let them be gratified by taking their ease at home without interruption if out of small cunning to avoid difficulties and to escape from the inconvenience of voting in critical cases let them enjoy that despicable pitch of wisdom and never pretend to make a figure where the public is to be served if it would not be thought advisable to trust a man immediately after he hath been drawn out of a jail it may be as reasonable to look upon one who for his non-attendance in the house hath been sent for in custody as a kind of bankrupt which putteth him upon unequal terms with those who have been assiduous in the discharge of their duty they who thought fit in one session to neglect the public business may be justly suspected by their standing in the next to intend their own besides these more deliberate offenders there are some who do not attend even when they are in the house absent in their thoughts for want to comprehending the business that is doing and therefore diverted from it by anything that is trivial such men are nuisances to a serious assembly and when they are numerous it amounteth almost to a dissolution it being scarce possible for good sense to be heard whilst a noise is made by the buzzing of these horse-flies the roman censors who degraded a senator for yawning whilst there was a debate would have much more abundant matter here upon which they might exercise their jurisdiction to conclude this head there are so few that ever mended in these cases that after the first experiment it is not at all reasonable to take them upon a new trial four men who are unquiet and busy in their natures are to give more than ordinary proofs of their integrity before the electing them into a public trust can be justified as a hot summer breedeth greater swarms of flies so an active time breedeth a greater number of these shining gentlemen it is pretty sure that men who cannot allow themselves to be at rest will let nobody else be at quiet such a perpetual activity is apt by degrees to be applied to the pursuit of their private interest and their thoughts being in a continual motion they have not time to dwell long enough upon anything to entertain a scruple so that they are generally at full liberty to do what is most convenient for them without being fettered by any restraints nay further whenever it happeneth that there is an impunity for cheating these nimble gentlemen are apt to think it a disparagement to their understandings not to go into it i doubt it is not a wrong to the present age to say that a knave is a less unpopular calling 
than it hath been in former times and to say truth it would be ingratitude in some men to turn honest when they owe all they have to their knavery the people are in this respect unhappy they are too many to do their own business their numbers which make their strength are at the same time the cause of their weakness they are too unwieldy to move and for this reason nothing can ever redeem them from this incurable impotency so that they must have solicitors to pursue and look after their interests who are too often disposed to dispense with the fidelity they owe to those that trust them especially if the government will pay their bills without abatement it is better these gentlemen's dexterity should be employed anywhere than in parliament where the ill consequence of their being members is too much diffused and not restrained to the county or borough who shall be so unwary as to choose them five great drinkers are less fit to serve in parliament than is apprehended men's virtue as well as their understanding is apt to be tainted by it the appearance of it is sociable and well-natured but it is by no means to be relied upon nothing is more frail than a man too far engaged in wet popularity the habit of it maketh men careless of their business and that naturally leadeth them into circumstances that make them liable to temptation it is seldom seen that any principles have such a root as that they can be proof against the continual droppings of a bottle as to the faculties of the mind there is not less objection the vapors of wine may sometimes throw out sparks of wit but they are like scattered pieces of ore there is no vein to work upon such wit even the best of it is like paying great fines in which case there must of necessity be an abatement of the constant rent nothing sure is a greater enemy to the brain than too much moisture it can the least of any thing bear the being continually steeped and it may be said that thought may be resembled to some creatures which can live only in a dry country yet so arrogant are some men as to think they are so much masters of business as that they can play with it they imagine they can drown their reason once a day and that it shall not be the worse for it forgetting that by too often diving the understanding at last groweth too weak to rise up again i will suppose this fault was less frequent when solon made it one of his laws that it was lawful to kill a magistrate if he was found drunk such a liberty taken in this age either in the parliament or out of it would do terrible execution i cannot but mention a petition in the year sixteen forty seven from the county of devon to the house of commons against the undue election of burgesses who are strong in wine and weak in wisdom the cause of such petitions is to be prevented by choosing such as shall not give handle to them six wanting men give such cause of suspicion wherever they deal that surely the choosers will be upon their guard as often as such dangerous pretenders make their application to them let the behavior of such men be never so plausible and untainted yet they who are to pitch upon those they are to trust with all they have may be excused if they do not only consider what they are but what they may be as we pray ourselves we may not be led into temptation we ought not by any means to thrust others into it even though our own interest was not concerned and sure when it is the argument hath not less force if a man hath a small estate and a numerous family where it happeneth that a man hath as many children as he hath tenants it is not a recommending circumstance for his election when it cometh to be the question with such a man whether he shall be just to the public or cruel to his family it is very possible the decision may be on the side of corrupted nature it is a compliment to this age which it doth not deserve 
to suppose men are so tied up to morality as that they cannot be pinched out of it especially now when it is called starving not to be embroidered or served in plate the men chosen to serve their country should not be loaden with suits that may tempt them to assume privileges much less under such necessities as may more immediately prepare them for corruption men who need a parliament for their own particular interest have more reason to offer their service than others have to accept of it and though i do not doubt but there may be some whose virtue would triumph over their wants let them be never so pressing yet to expose the public to the hazard of being deceived is that which can never be justified by those that choose and though it must be allowed possible for a wanting man to be honest yet it is impossible for a man to be wise that will depend upon it seven there is a sort of men that have a tinsel wit which make them shine among those who cannot judge club and coffee-house gentlemen petty merchants of small conceits who have an empty habit of prating without meaning they always aim at wit and generally make false fire their business is less to learn than to set themselves out which makes them choose to be with such as can only be witnesses of their small ingenuity rather than with such as might improve it there is a subordinate wit as much inferior to a wit of business as a fiddler at a wake is to the lofty sound of an organ men of this size are in no degree suited to the business of redressing grievances and making laws there's a parliament wit to be distinguished from all other kinds those who have it do not stuff their heads only with cavils and objections they have a deliberate and observing wit a head turned to public things men who place a greater pleasure in mending a fault than in finding it out their understanding directeth them to object in the right place and not like those who go by no other rule than to conclude that must be the best counsel which was not taken these wholesale judges show such a gross and peevish ignorance that it appeareth so openly in all they say or do that they give loud warning to all considering men not to choose them eight the dislike of slight airy men must not go so far as to recommend heaviness in opposition to it especially where men are convicted of it by experience in former sessions as a lively coxcomb will seldom fail to lay in his claim for wit so a blockhead is apt to pretend that his heaviness is a proof of his judgment some have an universal lethargy spread upon their understanding without exception others have an insufficiency quad hoc as in some cases men have quad hunk these last can never so turn their thoughts to public business as to give the attention that is necessary to comprehend it there are those who have such a thick shell upon their brains that their ignorance is impenetrable and maketh such a stout resistance against common sense that it will never be subdued by it true heart of oak ignorance that will never yield let reason beat never so hard upon it and though their kind neighbors have at several elections sent them up to school again they have still returned the same incurable dunces there is a false gravity that is a very ill symptom and it may be said that as rivers which run very slowly have always the most mud at the bottom so a solid stiffness in the constant course of a man's life is a sign of a thick bed of mud at the bottom of his brain a dull man is so near a dead man that he is hardly to be ranked in the list of the living and as he is not to be buried whilst he is half alive so he is as little to be employed whilst he is half dead parliaments are now grown to be quite other things than they were formerly in ancient times they were little more than great assizes a roll of grievances magna charta confirmed privileges of holy church preserved 
so many sacks of wool given and away now there are traps and gins laid for the well-meaning country gentleman he is to grapple with the cunning of men in town which is not a little improved by being rewarded and encouraged so that men whose good intentions are not seconded and supported by some degree of ability are as much the more dangerous as they are less criminal than cunning knaves their honest mistakes for want of distinguishing either give a countenance to or at least lessen the scandal of the injurious things that are done to the public and with leave asked for so odd an expression their innocent guilt is as mischievous to the laws and liberties as the most deliberate malice of those that would destroy them nine there is an abuse which daily increaseth of sending such to parliament as are scarce old enough to be sent to the university i would not in this restrain the definition of these boys to the age of twenty-one if my opinion might take place i should wish that none might be chosen into the house of commons under thirty and to make some equality i should from the same motives think it convenient that no lord should have a vote in judicature under that age but to leave this digression i cannot see why the choosers should not at least make it a rule among themselves not to send any man to represent them under the age of twenty-five which is the time of majority in most other places in the world surely it is not that we are earlier plants than our neighbors such supposition could neither be justified by our climate nor by the degree of latitude in which we are placed i must therefore attribute it to the haste our ancestors had and not without reason to free themselves from the severity of wardships but whether this or anything else was the cause of our earlier stepping into man's estate so it is now that according to our laws twenty-one is the age of discretion and the young man is then vested with a legal how defective soever he may be in his natural understanding with all this there ought to be a difference made between coming out of pupilage and leaping into legislatorship it is perhaps inconvenient enough that a man should be so soon let loose to destroy his own estate but it is yet worse that he should then have a power of giving away other men's the law must make general rules to which there always will be some objections if there were triers appointed to judge when leading strings should be left off many would wear them a very great while and some perhaps with their gray hairs there being no small number of old boys in all times and especially in this it is necessary therefore to make exceptions to this general rule where the case so much requireth it as it doth in the matter in question the ground of sending these minors to parliament ought not to recommend the continuance of it to those who are lovers of liberty since it was by the authority and influence of great men that their stripling sons were first received by the humble depending boroughs or the complying counties they called it as many do still the best school for young men now experience hath showed us that it is like a school only in this respect that these youngsters when they are admitted deserve to be whipped in it if the house of commons is a school it must be for men of riper age these are too young to learn there and being elevated by a mistaken smattering in small politics they grow too supercilious to learn anywhere else so that instead of improving young promising plants they are destroyed by being misplaced if then they do themselves hurt by it it is sure yet that they do the house no good by coming into it they were not green geese that are said to have saved the capital they were certainly of full age or else their cackling could not have been heard so as to give warning indeed it looked of late when the fashion was to have long continued parliaments as if we might plant a boy in the house with a prospect that he might continue there till he had gray hairs and that the same sapling might have such a root as that he might grow up to be timber without being removed 
if these young men had skill enough to pitch upon somebody in the house to whom they might resign their opinion and upon whose judgment they might lean without reserve there might be less objection but to speak truth they know as little how to choose as those did who elected them so that there is no other expedient left than the letting them alone one may say generally speaking that a young man being too soon qualified for the serious business of parliaments would really be no good symptom it is a sign of too much phlegm and too little fire in the beginning of age if men have not a little more heat than is convenient for as they grow older they will run a hazard of not having so much as is necessary the truth is the vigor of youth is softened and misapplied when it is not spent either in war or close studies all other courses have an idle mixture that cometh to nothing and maketh them like trees which for want of pruning run up to wood and seldom or never bear any fruit to conclude this head it must be owned that there is no age of our life which doth not carry arguments along with it to humble us and therefore it would be well for the business of the world if young men would stay longer before they went into it and old men not so long before they went out of it ten next to these may be ranked a sort of superfine gentlemen carpet knights men whose heads may be said to be only appurtenances to their perukes which entirely engross all their care and application their understanding is so strictly appropriated to their dress that no part of it is upon pain of their utmost displeasure to be diverted to any other use it is not by this intended to recommend an affected clown or to make it a necessary qualification for a member of parliament that he must renounce clean linen or good manners but surely a too earnest application to make everything sit right about them striketh too deep into their small stock of thoughts to allow it furniture for anything else to do right to these fine-spun gentlemen business is too coarse a thing for them which maketh it an unreasonable hardship upon them to oppress them with it so that in tenderness to them no less than out of care to the public it is best to leave them to their tailors with whom they will live in much better correspondence when the danger is prevented of their falling out about privileges eleven men of injustice and violence in their private dealings are not to be trusted by the people with a commission to treat for them in parliament in the fourth of edward third the king commandeth in his writs not to choose any knights who had been guilty of crime or maintenance these warm men seldom fail to run into maintenance taken in a larger extent it is an unnatural sound to come from a man that is arbitrary in his neighborhood to talk of laws and liberties at westminster he is not a proper vehicle for such words which ought never to be profaned an habitual breaker of the laws to be made one of the law-makers is as if the benches in westminster hall should be filled with men out of newgate those who are of this temper cannot change their nature out of respect to their country quite contrary they will less scruple to do wrong to a nation where no body taketh it to himself than to particular men to whose resentments they are more immediately exposed in short they lie under such strong objections that the overbalance of better men cannot altogether purify an assembly where these unclean beasts are admitted twelve excessive spenders and unreasonable savers are to be excluded being both greedy from differing causes they are both of them diseases of infection and for that reason are not to be admitted into public assemblies a prodigal man must be greedy because he thinketh he can never spend enough the wretch must be so because he will never think he can hoard enough the world first admireth men's wisdom for getting money and then raileth at them if they do not throw it away so that the prodigal man is only the less unpopular extreme he is 
every jot as well prepared as the miser to fall out with his morals when once a good temptation is offered him to lay them aside on the other side some rich men are as eager to overtake those that are richer as a running horse is to get to the race post before the other that contendeth with him men often desire to heap rather because others have more than that they know what to do with that which they covet with so much impatience so that it is plain the fancy hath as great a share in this imaginary pleasure of gathering as it hath in love ambition or any other passion it is pretty sure that as no man was ever the richer for having a good estate if he did not look after it so neither will he be the honester if he hath never so much want of care will always create want of money so that whether a man is a beggar because he never had any money or because he can never keep any it is all one to those who are to trust him upon this head of prodigality it may be no unreasonable caution to be afraid of those who in former service have been extravagantly liberal to the public money trusting is so hazardous a thing that it should never be done but where it is necessary so that when trustees are found upon trial to be very lavish even without examining into the causes of it which are generally very suspicious it is a reasonable part of preventing wit to change hands or else the choosers will pay the penalty that belongeth to good nature so misplaced and the consequences will be attended with the aggravation of their not being made wiser by such a severe and costly warning thirteen it would be of very great use to take a general resolution throughout the kingdom that none should be chosen for a county but such as have either in possession or reversion a considerable estate in it nor for a borough except he be resiant or that he hath some estate in the county in present or expectancy there have been eminent men of law who were of opinion that in the case of a burgess of a town not resiant the court is to give judgment according to the statute notwithstanding custom to the contrary but not to insist now upon that the prudential part is argument enough to set up a rule to abrogate an ill custom there is not perhaps a greater cause of the corruption of parliaments than by adopting members who may be said to have no title by their births the juries are by the law to be ex vicinato and shall there be less care that the representatives of the people be so too sure the interest of the county is best placed in the hands of such as have some share in it the outliers are not so easily kept within the pale of the laws they are often chosen without being known which is more like choosing valentines than members of parliament the motive of their standing is more justly to be supposed that they may redress their own grievances which they know than those of the country to which they are strangers they are chosen at london to serve in cornwall etc and are often parties before they come to be representatives one would think the reproach it is for a county not to have men within their own circle to serve them in parliament should be argument enough to reject these trespassers without urging the ill consequences in other respects of their being admitted fourteen as in some cases it is advisable to give a total exclusion to men not fitly qualified so in others it is more proper to lay down a general rule of caution with allowance of some exceptions where men have given such proofs of themselves as create a right for them to be distinguished of this nature is that which i shall say concerning lawyers who by the same reason that they may be useful may be also very dangerous the negligence and want of application in gentlemen hath made them to be thought more necessary than naturally they are in parliament they have not only engrossed the chair of the speaker but that of a committee is hardly thought to be well filled except it be by a man of the robe this maketh it worthy of the more serious reflection of all gentlemen that it may be an argument to them to qualify themselves in parliamentary learning in such a manner 
as that they may rely upon their own abilities in order to the serving their country but to come to the point in question it is not without precedent that practicing lawyers have been excluded from serving in parliament and without following those patterns strictly i cannot but think it reasonable that whilst a parliament sitteth no member of parliament should plead at any bar the reason of it is in many respects strong in itself and is grown much stronger by the long sitting parliaments of late but i will not dwell upon this the matter now in question being concerning lawyers being elected which i conceive should be done with so much circumspection that probably it would not often happen if lawyers have great practice that ought to take them up if not it is no great sign of their ability and at the same time giveth a suspicion that they may be more liable to be tempted if it should be so in fact that no king ever wanted judges to soften the stiffness of the laws that were made so as to make them suit better with the reason of state and the convenience of the government it is no injury now to suppose it possible for lawyers in the house of commons so to behave themselves in the making of new laws as the better to make way for the having their robes lined with fur they are men used to argue on both sides of a question and if ordinary fees can inspire them with very good reasons in a very ill cause that faculty exercised in parliaments where it may be better encouraged may prove very inconvenient to those that choose them and therefore without arraigning a profession that it would be scandalous for a man not to honor one may by a suspicion which is the more excusable when it is in the behalf of the people imagine that the habit of taking money for their opinion may create in some such a forgetfulness to distinguish that they may take it for their vote they are generally men who by a laborious study hope to be advanced they have it in their eye as a reward for the toil they undergo this maketh them generally very slow and ill disposed let the occasion never so much require it to wrestle with that soil where preferment groweth now if the supposition be in itself not unreasonable and that it should happen to be strengthened and confirmed by experience it will be very unnecessary to say any more upon this article but leave it to the election to consider of it fifteen i cannot forbear to put in a caveat against men tied to a party there must in every body be a leaning to that sort of men who profess some principles more than to others who go upon a different foundation but when a man is drowned in a party plunged in it beyond his depth he runneth a great hazard of being upon ill terms with good sense or morality if not with both of them such a man can hardly be called a free agent and for that reason is very unfit to be trusted with the people's liberty after he hath given up his own it is said that in some part of the indies they do so affect little feet that they keep them squeezed while they are children so that they stay at that small size after they are grown men one may say something like this of men locked up in a party they put their thoughts into such a narrow mould that they can never be enlarged nor released from their first confinements men in a party have liberty only for their motto in reality they are greater slaves than anybody else would care to make them a party even in times of peace though against the original contract and the bill of rights sets up and continues the exercise of martial law once enrolled the man that quitteth if they had their will would be hanged for a deserter they communicate anger to one another by contagion and it may be said that if too much light dazzleth the eyesight too much heat doth not less weaken the judgment heat reigneth in the fancy and reason which is a colder faculty of the brain taketh more time to be heard than the other will allow the heat of a party is like the burning of a fever and not a natural warmth evenly distributed to give life and vigor 
there was a time indeed when anger showed a good sign of honesty but that evidence is very much weakened by instances we have seen since the days of yore and the public-spirited collar hath been thrown off within the time of memory and lost almost all its credit with some people since they found what governments thought fit to make their so doing a step to their preferment a strong blustering wind seldom continues long in one corner some men knock loud only to be let in the bustle they make is animated by their private interest the outward blaze only is for religion and liberty the true lasting fire like that of the vestals which never went out is an eagerness to get somewhat for themselves a house of commons composed of such men would be more probably so many merchants incorporated in a regular company to make their particular adventures than men sent from the people to serve and represent them there are some splenetic gentlemen who confine their favorable opinion within so narrow a compass that they will not allow it to any man that was not hanged in the late reigns now by that rule one might expect they should rescue themselves from the disadvantage of being now alive and by abdicating a world so little worthy of them get a great name to themselves with the general satisfaction of all those they would leave behind them amongst the many other ill consequences of a stated party it is none of the least that it tempteth low and insignificant men to come upon the stage to expose themselves and to spoil business it turneth a cipher into a figure such an one as it is a man in a party is able to make a noise let it be never so empty a sound a weak man is easily blown out of his small senses by being mustered into a party he is flattered till he liketh himself so well that he taketh it extremely ill if he hath not an employment nothing is more in fashion than for men to desire good places and i doubt nothing is less so than to deserve them from nobody to somebody is such a violent stride that nature which hath the negative voice will not give its royal assent to it so that when insufficient men aim at being in business the worst of their enemies might out of malice to them pray for their preferment there could be no end if one did not stop till this theme had no more matter to furnish i will only say nothing is more evident than that the good of the nation hath been sacrificed to the animosities of several contending parties and without entering into the dispute which of them are more or less in the right it is pretty sure that whilst these opposite sets of angry men are playing at football they will break all the windows and do more hurt than their pretended zeal for the nation will ever make amends for in short a man so engaged is retained before the people take him for their counsel he hath such a reserve for his party that it is not advisable for those who would choose him to depend upon his professions all parties assuming such a dispensing power that by their sovereign authority they cancel and dissolve any act or promise that they do not afterwards approve these things considered those who will choose such men deserve whatever followeth sixteen pretenders to exorbitant merit in the late revolution are not without objection against them when they stand to serve in parliament it would not only be a low but a criminal kind of envy to deny a distinguishing justice to men who have been instrumental and active when the service of their country required it but there ought to be moderation in men's claims or else it is out of the power of our poor island to satisfy them it is true service of all kinds is grown much dearer like laborers wages which formerly occasioned several statutes to regulate them but now the men who only carried mortar to the building when it is finished think they are ill dealt with if they are not made master workmen they presently cry out the original contract is broken if their merit is not rewarded at their own rate too 
some will think there never ought to be an end of their rewards when indifferent judges would perhaps be puzzled to find out the beginning of their merit they bring in such large bills that they must be examined some bounds must be put to men's pretensions else the nation which is to pay the reckoning will every way think it a scurvy thing to be undone whether it be by being overrun by our enemies or by being exhausted by our friends there ought therefore to be deductions where they are reasonable the better to justify the paying what remaineth for example if any of these passionate lovers of the protestant religion should not think fit in their manner of living to give the least evidence of their morality their claims upon that head might sure be struck off without any injustice to them if there are any who set down great sums as a reward due to their zeal for rescuing property from the jaws of arbitrary power their pretensions may fairly be rejected if now they are so far from showing a care and tenderness of the laws that they look rather like counsel retained on the other side it is no less strange than i doubt it is true that some men should be so in love with their dear mistress old england with all her wrinkles as out of an heroic passion to swim over to rescue her from being ravaged and when they have done the feat the first thing after enjoyment is that they go about to strangle her for the sake of true love it is not fit that such ungenteel gallants should be too much encouraged and their arrogance for having done well at first will have no right to be excused if their so doing ill at last doth not make them a little more modest true merit like a river the deeper it is the less noise it maketh these loud proclaimers of their own deserts are not only to be suspected for their truth but the electors are to consider that such meritorious men lay an assessment upon those that choose them the public taxes are already heavy enough without the addition of these private reckonings it is therefore the safer way not to employ men who will expect more for their wages than the mistaken borough that sendeth them up to parliament could be sold for seventeen with all due regard to the noblest of callings military officers are out of their true element when they are misplaced in a house of commons things in this world ought to be well suited there are some appearances so unnatural that men are convinced by them without any other argument the very habit in some cases recommendeth or giveth offence if the judges upon the bench should instead of their furs which signify gravity and bespeak respect be clothed like the jockeys at newmarket or wear jackboots and steenkirks they would not in reality have less law but mankind would be so struck with this unusual object that it would be a great while before they could think it possible to receive justice from men so accoutred it is to some degree the same thing in this case such martial habits blue coats red stocking etc make them look very unlike grave senators one would almost swear they were creatures apart and of a differing species from the rest of the body in former times when only the recent shopkeeper was to represent his corporation which by the way is the law still at this day the military looks of one of these sons of mars would have stared the quaking member down again to his burrow now the number of them is so increased that the peaceable part of the house may lawfully swear they are in fear of their lives from such an awful appearance of men of war it maketh the room look like a guard-house by such an ill-suited mixture but this is only the outside the bark of the argument the root goeth yet deeper against choosing such men whose talents ought to be otherwise applied their two capacities are so inconsistent that men's undertaking to serve both the cures will be the cause in a little time that we shall neither have men of war nor men of business good in their several kinds an officer is to give up his liberty to obey orders and it is necessarily incident to his calling that he should do so a member of parliament 
is originally to be tender of his own liberty that other men may the better trust him with theirs an officer is to enable himself by his courage improved by skill and experience to support the laws if invaded when they are made but he is not supposed to be at leisure enough to understand how they should be made a member of parliament is to fill his thoughts with what may best conduce to the civil administration which is enough to take up the whole man let him be never so much raised above the ordinary level these two opposite qualifications being placed in one man make him such an ambiguous divided creature that he doth not know how to move it is best to keep men within their proper sphere few men have understanding enough exactly to fill even one narrow circle fewer are able to fill two especially when they are both of so great compass and that they are so contrary in their own natures the wages he hath as a member and those he receiveth as an officer are paid for services that are very differing and in the doubt which of them should be preferably performed it is likely the greater salary may direct him without the further inducements of complying most where he may expect most advantage by it in short if his dependence is not very great it will make him a scurvy officer if it is great it will make him a scurvier member eighteen men under the scandal of being thought private pensioners are too fair a mark to escape being considered in reference to the point in question in case of plain evidence it is not to be supposed possible that men convicted of such a crime should ever again be elected the difficulty is in determining what is to be done in case of suspicion there are suspicions so well grounded that they may pretend to have the force of proofs provided the penalty goeth only to the forbearing to trust but not extending it so far as to punish there must be some things plain and express to justify the latter but circumstances may be sufficient for the former as where men have had such sudden cures of their ill humors and opposition to the court that it is out of the way of ordinary methods of recovery from such distempers which have a much slower progress it must naturally be imputed to some specific that maketh such a quick alteration of the whole mass of blood where men have raised their way of living without any visible means to support them in it a suspicion is justified even by the example of the law which in cases of this kind though of an inferior nature doth upon this foundation not only raise inferences but inflict punishments where men are immoral and scandalous in their lives and dispense familiarly with the rules by which the world is governed for the better preserving the bonds of human society it must be a confidence very ill placed to conclude it impossible for such men to yield to a temptation well offered and pursued when the truth is the habit of such bon vivant which is the fashionable word maketh a suspicion so likely that it is very hard to believe it to be true if there should be nothing but the general report even that is not to be neglected common fame is the only liar that deserveth to have some respect still reserved to it though she telleth many an untruth she often hitteth right and most especially when she speaketh ill of men her credit hath sometimes been carried too far when it hath gone to the divesting men of anything of which they were possessed without more express evidence to justify such a proceeding if there was a doubt whether there ever was any corruption of this kind it would alter the question but sure that will not bear the being controverted we are told that charles v sent over into england one million two hundred thousand crowns to be distributed amongst the leading men to encourage them to carry on elections here was the protestant religion to be bought out for a valuable consideration according to law though not according to gospel which exalteth it above any price that can be set upon it now except we had reason to believe that the virtue of the world is improved since that time 
we can as little doubt that such temptations may be offered as that they may be received it will be owned that there is to be a great tenderness in suspecting but it must be allowed at the same time that there ought not to be less in trusting where the people are so much concerned especially when the penalty upon the party suspected goeth no further than a suspension of that confidence which it is necessary to have in those who are to represent the nation in parliament nineteen i cannot omit the giving a caution against admitting men to be chosen who have places of any value there needeth the less to be said upon this article the truth of the proposition being supported by such plain arguments sure no man hath such a plentiful spring of thought as that all that floweth from it is too much to be applied to the business of parliament it is not less sure that a member of parliament of all others ought not to be exempted from the rule that no man should serve two masters it doth so split a man's thoughts that no man can know how to make a fitting distribution of them to two such differing capacities it exposeth men to be suspected and tempted more than is convenient for the public service or for the mutual good opinion of one another which there ought to be in such an assembly it either giveth a real dependence upon the government which is inconsistent with the necessity there is that a member of parliament should be disengaged or at least it hath the appearance of it which maketh them not look like freemen though they should have virtue enough to be so more reasons would lessen the weight of this last which is that a bill to this effect commonly called the self-denying bill passed even this last house of commons a greater demonstration of the irresistible strength of truth cannot possibly be given so that a copy of that bill in every county or borough would hardly fail of discouraging such pretenders from standing or at least it would prevent their success if their own modesty should not restrain them from attempting it twenty if distinctions may be made upon particular men or remarks fixed upon their votes in parliament they must be allowed in relation to those gentlemen who for reasons best known to themselves thought fit to be against the triennial bill the liberty of opinion is the thing in the world that ought least to be controlled and especially in parliament but as that is an undoubted assertion it is not less so that when men sin against their own light give a vote against their own thought they must not plead privilege of parliament against the being arraigned for it by others after they are convicted of it by themselves there cannot be a man who in his definition of a house of commons will state it to be an assembly that for the better redressing of grievances the people feel and for the better furnishing such supplies as they can bear is to continue if the king so pleaseth for his whole reign this could be as little intended as to throw all into one hand and to renounce the claim to any liberty but so much as the sovereign authority would allow it destroyeth the end of parliaments it maketh use of the letter of the law to extinguish the life of it it is in truth some kind of disparagement to so plain a thing that so much has been said and written upon it and one may say it is such an affront to these gentlemen's understandings to censure this vote only as a mistake that as the age goeth it is less discredit to them to call it by its right name and if that is rightly understood by those who are to choose them i suppose they will let them exercise their liberty of conscience at home and not make men their trustees who in this solemn instance have such an unwillingness to surrender it must be owned that this bill hath met with very hard fortune and yet that doth not in the least diminish the value of it it had in it such a root of life that it might be said it was not dead but slept and we see that the last session it was revived and animated by the royal assent when once fully informed of the consequence as well as of the justice of it 
in the meantime after having told my opinion who ought not to be chosen if i should be asked who ought to be my answer must be choose englishmen and when i have said that to deal honestly i will not undertake that they are easy to be found end of some cautions offered to the consideration of those who are to choose members to serve for the ensuing parliament read by john greenman